Um, hey everyone, uh, thanks for coming in today. And it's a nice presentation. You know, I always find the uh, psychological side of trading very fascinating. Um, but what I'm going to talk about today is understanding order flow imbalances and how to trade them. So my name is Michael Waltos. I'm the founder and trader of orderflows.com. And my goal in this presentation today is to talk about what is an order flow imbalance and why they occur, stacked imbalances and their importance, how to trade market imbalances with limited risk, and I'm going to share with you my top two order flow imbalance trade setups that you can take away. And if you're already trading with order flow, hopefully you can uh, start looking for them and apply them in your trading plan. And if you stick around until the end of the presentation, I'll show you how to get a copy of my book that I wrote, 150 pages, called uh, Trading Order Flow, which is you know my insights and knowledge on order flow. And you know it, it's a nice it's a nice book. You said if you're new to order flow, I, it's basically the only book on trading order flow out there. And I think you'll find it very useful. So, you know, just let me give you a little bit of background for, about myself. If you're not familiar with me, like I said, my name is Michael Walthos. I spent uh, eight years as vice president of futures trading at J.P. Morgan. You know, sitting on the trading desk, not one of these you know admin people sitting you know in an office in a corner somewhere. No, I was actually doing the, the trading. I'd go in the office at in the morning and I'm there until five o'clock at night. Prior to that I spent four years at the commodity trading firm Cargill. I even went to Singapore for a year to set up a trading desk in Singapore when the Singapore exchange decided to go fully electronic and we moved our trading from on the floor to off the floor. I spent uh, three years as a Eurex trader trading Buns, Bobble Shats, DAX, Euro Stocks at Commerce Bank in Chicago. Um, you know, this was back in the 90s when uh, Commerce Bank was expanding in the U.S. And you know, Commerce Bank is, was, at that time, the second or third largest bank in Germany. And I started on the CME floor in the early 90s as, as a runner, basically on the bottom, you know, the, the lowest place you could start. Nowadays, you can't do that. There's no trading floor. And it's a little bit more difficult to get into the trading industry now than it was you know, 15, 20 years ago. You know, nowadays you have to be a quant or you know you gotta um, you know you go graduating from a top school. You know the before you could just go down to the trading floor and you know basically beg someone for a job. Nowadays you can't. It's very difficult to get in, and that's one of the reasons why I, I started up order flows is so I could impart my knowledge on trading to people that otherwise would never be exposed to it. And you know this is a picture of myself, and my family. I like this picture because it just shows me and reminds me you know. The, the life that trading has afforded me. You know, this is in Hong Kong earlier, well, sorry, about six months ago for my son's first birthday. And, you know, it, if you're successful at trading, if you understand the markets and you make your living from trading, you know, the, the world just opens up for you. You can do what you want. You know, it gives you freedom. And, and that's ultimately what you want in life. And anything you do is you want freedom. Now, in 2013, I left JP Morgan after the birth of our daughter. And I want to spend more time with my wife and, and daughter. You know, I mean, it's, for me, is I've been working in the industry, trading for over 20 years, and you know, I, I, was, I like to think I was successful. And you know, it's, it's time to take a step back and enjoy, you know, the fruits of my labor. And I, as I was trading by myself. I started writing my book, the book that you get for free there. I just explained, and I was trading with a different order flow system or chart rather, but I didn't really. You know, it was just the basic, and I said, you know what, computers are here to help you and you know make your life a lot easier. So I sat down with the programmer and I went over some of the the things that I wanted my order flow chart to do. You know, I wanted it to help tell me, you know, when conditions were met that you know there's support in the market, there's resistance in the market, there's price acceptance, price rejection. And in 2015, I started order flows, and basically, you know, what it is, it's the main flagship software is the order flow trader. And it's an order flow volume footprint chart programmed to my specs to highlight to me more trading opportunities based on order flow analysis. It runs on NinjaTrader 7 or NinjaTrader 8. It run, it, it'll run on the paid version, it'll run on the free version. It'll run on any, either version that you're using. If you're using the free version, that's fine. You know, If you want to route your orders to another broker, you can use the free version. If you want to use a broker supplied by NinjaTrader, then you're set. Now. Again, you know, when I talk about, you know, program to my specs is because I said there's many different ways to analyze the order flow. And, you know, with the computer, it could take 
away some of that analysis, I say take away, but rather do it for you so you can concentrate on watching more markets. Because, you know, when you're trading, oftentimes you're staring at the screen, you're staring at one or two markets, you know, you're really involved. And, you know, being off the floor, really what, you, you know, what that gives you is it gives you the capacity to monitor more markets. Now, of course, you know, monitoring more markets, you open yourself up to more risks. But if the computer can do some of the heavy lifting for you, then highlight to you that, hey, you know, it's, some conditions are being met here. It's a selling opportunity. It's a buying opportunity. Take a closer look. You know, that this is going to just give you more trading opportunities. And as a trader, you know, you need more trading opportunities if you're going to make more money. I mean, it, it's a matter of fact. But before I, I jump into everything, I want to read a disclaimer again because I, I want people to understand, you know, there is risk involved in trading. You know, this presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. It should not be considered a solicitation to buy or sell a futures contract or make any other type of investment decision. Futures trading contains substantial risk and is not for every investor. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Now, again, you know, that said, you know, there is risk in trading. And, you know, I've done a lot of things right in trading, but I've also done a lot of things wrong. You know, I've had spectacular <coughs> mistakes. And, you know, it's cost money. And in the past 20 years of trading, I like to think I've achieved above average success. I didn't go through problems that most traders face. And after 20 years, I realized no matter how much you stare at the screen, the market's going to do what it wants to do. You can't control the market. Also, nothing is 100% in trading. You know, you could have the best indicator in the world. It tells you to buy something. You buy it. But then there's some guy at Goldman Sachs sitting on there. His computer spits out a sell order to sell 5,000 contracts. And you just bought, you know, what can you do? You can't control that. There are things in trading you just can't control. And most importantly, being successful at trading takes work. Now, there are, you know, savants out there that, you know, just take the, the trading like ducks to water. But, you know, those, those are the, the very, very few. And most traders I know that are successful, you know, they put in the time. Just like, you know, an athlete. You know, basketball player will, will warm up, you know, shoot 300, 400, 500 free throws before a game starts. You know, being successful takes work. Being a successful athlete, being a successful trader takes work. Now, you could do things the hard way. And what's the hard way? Is devote years of your life trying to figure out what makes the markets move. And some people will never understand it. You know, or you could waste money on the latest shiny trading objects. You know, um, you know so many people out there I've met, you know, buy indicators and use them for a couple of days and they see, oh, you know what, it's, you know, it had a drawdown and then they give up on it or they try to change the rules and then, you know, they, they just deviate off the path and then they, you know, just move on to something else. Now, that's not learning how to trade. That's learning how to take trades. And worst of all is blowing out trading account after trading account. And, you know, I, I've met people that, that, you know, wear it as a badge of honor. Oh, I've blown up five trading accounts. Oh, my gosh. You, why, you know, um, if you keep blowing out account after account, you really should reassess if trading is for you. Honestly, you know, it's like the people uh, that go to Las Vegas and say, well, you know, if I lose ten thousand dollars this weekend, that's fine. It's entertainment. Gosh, you know, I could think of a lot of other ways to entertain myself than being stressed out, you know, gambling at a table, hoping I make money and but ultimately losing money. You know, I'd rather sit on a beach. I spend that money, go to Hawaii and spend a week on a beach. But, you know, that's me. You know, some people, like I said, you know, like to say, I've blown out trading account, you know, before I became successful. Okay, I can understand you had a drawdown, but, I mean, to literally have to keep funding accounts, funding accounts, that makes no sense. You should really consider, reconsider trading. Or you can do things the easy way, and the easy way is, is me teaching you. So over the years, like I said, you know, I've done things right, I've done things wrong, but what I really kept coming back to was order flow. And... You know, I, I just find that order flow is the equalizer. You, know, you can see where traders are being aggressive, where value is in the near term, how to determine when the market's out of balance, how to see accumulation or distribution in the market, and, and much more. Now, you know, before I jump in, you know, I just want you know, results will vary for everybody. Not everybody is going to commit themselves to um, the, the 
time it takes to learn or the time to watch the markets. You know, some people will say, I only got 10 minutes a day or I got an hour a day. And some people say, you know what, I've put my everything else on hold. I'm going to sit down for um, the next two months and really apply myself to the market. So, you know, people's results are going to vary and it really comes down to you on how much action you want to take. So what is order flow? If you're not familiar with order flow, this is a volume footprint chart. It's, a little, it's different than a dome, the depth of market chart. But what it does is it takes the information that's put out by the exchange, you know, the time and sales, and puts it into an easy to read format, easy to digest uh, chart. And this, this is what I call the building blocks of order flow is the three things, delta, which is a net difference between aggressive buying and aggressive selling, the bar point of control, which is the point in the bar with the most volume. And what I'll be talking about today buying imbalances and selling imbalances. When you have more aggressive buyers than sellers or more aggressive sellers than buyers, and that's what causes markets to move. Markets don't move because you have more buyers than sellers. No, for every buyer, you have a seller. For every seller, you have a buyer. But there are times when the net difference between what is trading on the, on the bid side versus what's trading on the offer side shows market aggression. And why is order flow imbalances important? Well, because it's the opportunity to buy or sell is at its highest point, yet the risk to buy or sell is at its lowest point. So that's the ideal situation for a trader, right? You want to trade when the opportunity is at its highest, but the risk is at its lowest. And you know that's what I'm gonna be talking about today with, with imbalances. And it's not something that, you know, very, very few people have really expanded on imbalances. And part of the reason why is because I think a lot of traders just don't understand order flow imbalances. And part of the reason is, you know, for, for new people to order flow, it's, you know, they see imbalances, they see buying imbalances, selling imbalances, and they see them, you know, fairly often. But they don't know how to actually use it in their trading. And so they just see buying imbalances, selling imbalances. Oh, okay, yeah, buying imbalance, selling imbalance, and then just disregard it. Like you can see on this chart here, you know, you got some buying imbalances, buying imbalances, and you got selling imbalances. Okay, yeah, yeah, I don't know how to, you know, they don't understand how to really um, apply it in their trading. And today is, is you know, I'm going to explain it hopefully to you that by the time you walk away, you can understand. Now remember, markets are a two-way auction. You know, there's a bid and there's an offer. And, you know, most people are familiar with a, a dome. It's basically, you know, your, your price ladder. Most people trade off of it. And what imbalance does is when you compare the volume traded on the bid versus the volume traded on the offer. So in this case, you know, the dome is showing 2353 and a half bid offered at 2353.75 offer. And when it trades, you know, either on the bid side or on the offer side, that volume is put into the volume footprint chart. You know, it'll appear on, on the on the right hand side. And over time, you know, you could see areas where there were aggressive selling or aggressive buying, you know, these blue numbers or these red numbers, those are imbalances. So basically, you know, if you're just looking at an order at, at a dome, you, it's, you can't decipher that. I mean, you could, you know, maybe if you're some brilliant, you know, um, you know, trader, you could do the calculations in your head that maybe you can sort of see that information, but just put it on a chart. You know, you have the information there, take off some of that, that stress out of you trying to decide, you know, is it there, is it not there, and put it right in front of you and see, yeah, it was there. And, you know, imbalances occur, like I said, you know, going back here. Um, when one side trades at least 400% or more, you have what's called an imbalance, right? And they occur um, when one side is more aggressive than the other side. You either have more aggressive buying or more aggressive selling. And again, if you're trading on a dome, you're not going to see it. You're not going to see too much information other than what is trading right now. And again, I know people that I've stared at a dome for my entire trading career since domes started back in the 90s, when, since all these exchanges went electronically, went electronic. And yeah, there is some information you could get, you know, with orders being layered in and things like that. But it takes a trained eye. Yeah, it, it, there's a lot of traders that are new to trading and thinking, oh, I'm going to get a dome and learn how to trade a dome. It, it's a skill. Okay, and not everybody can take to it really quick. And one of the things is you can't really see or determine if a trade is causing an imbalance. I mean, you can see big trades going through on a dome. Yes, you can, but you don't know for sure because you don't 
you're not looking at the actual numbers. You're just seeing, okay, 50 lots traded, another 20 lots traded. You know, it, it takes a skill to sort of analyze that in your head and really filter it out. Now, on a footprint chart, right, again, it takes all the trading that's occurring on the dome and it puts it in onto an easy to read format for you. So you can make decisions, you know, without having a gun to your head. You know, the way I, I describe trading on a dome is almost having a slot machine on your desk. You know, honestly, you know, when you see the market moving on a dome, sometimes you're, you're inclined to want to just jump in and go with the move. And ultimately, it, it ends in, in losses. It takes really good discipline, and, and you have to be a good trader. I mean, you know, I know people that trade strictly on a dome, and they're, they're successful with it, but they're extremely disciplined. Most people don't necessarily have that discipline. So on a volume footprint chart, right, it's, it's a little bit more relaxed. You can see what's trading, and then yeah, you can make your decision based on what you see, you know, analyze the information that's there. And you can see how it's – I circled a couple of imbalances. Here you have two buying imbalances, and here you have a selling imbalance. The red numbers in the bar are selling imbalances. The blue ones are buying imbalances. So you can see how the selling imbalance here, 75 against 17 on this red bar right in the middle, 75 lots traded on the bid versus 17 traded on the offer. Remember, it's bid and offer. It's a two-way auction. You have a bid, you have an offer. You should be comparing what traded on the bid against what traded on the offer. Just as here, you have two buying imbalances. 60 against 256, 52 against 262, those are imbalances. Now these black numbers, that's just the normal order flow. Okay, there's no imbalance, and you know, that's just market facilitating trade. That's what the markets are created for, is to facilitate trade. Now every contract that shows up, every contract that's traded in the market on futures exchanges show up in the time and sales. And as a result, you know that information is disseminated to the public and you can put it on an order flow volume footprint chart. You know, it's information out there, and a lot of people don't use that information. It, it boggles my mind why people still aren't looking at a footprint chart, but you know, maybe they just, they're just they scared. You know, They see a lot of numbers, and you know, I know a lot of people are scared, but really what a volume footprint chart does is it takes that information and just makes it easier for you to understand. Now, you see a lot of numbers, but not every number has you know information that you can make a trading decision off of, but there are times when the market is so clear, it shouts out to you saying, hey, there's a buying opportunity here on the order flow, or there's a selling opportunity, and if you don't know what to look for, you're not going to see it, right? And that's why I do these presentations, because, you know, I want people to understand how to read and understand order flow. You know, it, it, it amazes me that people spend thousands of dollars, you know, on, on software, but don't take the time to really understand how to use it. You know, it's like buying those, you know, the big DSLR cameras, you know, Canon EOS or whatever, and just running it in automatic mode, right? I mean, you know, if, you, if you take a few moments, you know, 15 minutes, an hour to understand how, you know, the different f-stops work and, you know, the different um, settings, then, you know, you'd take much more amazing pictures. And the trading is the same way, you know, if you understand, take some time to understand a volume footprint chart, understand the order flow, it's not going to hinder your trading. If anything, it, it will help your trading. So by now you should understand what imbalances are. Now stacked imbalances is taking imbalances to the next level. And what a stacked imbalance is, is when you have three or more imbalances in the same direction, stacked on top of each other. So like three buying imbalances, you know, like here you have this green area, you have 5, 15, 35 in blue. Those are, that's a stacked imbalance. And, you know, you can see it here, right? The order flows trader, this is one of the reasons why I created this order flows trader software, which takes the volume footprint chart, a little, you know, a couple steps further is because, you know, there's certain things I like to look for in imbalances. And stacked imbalances often lead to support or resistance in the market. You know, a stack buying imbalance often lends support to the market, whereas a stack selling imbalance here, you got three red ones, leads to uh, resistance. And you can see how this market was, was going up, starts coming down, and you got stacked imbalance. You got sellers here. You got a three, you got aggressive selling three levels deep here. And you see how the market trades back up there, comes off, trades back up, comes off, and then just sells off. You got resistance in there. Why? It's because you have big seller coming in at this level 
And oftentimes, you know, if the selling is real, if it's legit, when the market trades back up in there, you're still going to, those sellers are probably still going to be there, right? And they're holding down the market that, you know, they're acting as resistance. This is market generated information at its, at its best. And you're seeing what's happening right now. You know that you have sellers here and the market reacts to it because the market's not going to go up because every time it pokes up, you have these aggressive sellers in here. So stack imbalances, right? They often create support or resistance in the market. And like I said, you know, market generated information such as support resistance levels are based on what's happening right now. I mean, the best information is based on what's happening right now, not something that happened an hour ago or two hours ago or a level from three days ago. No, it's, it's based on what's happening right now. Now, not every order or every trade is going to matter. Like I said, on, yeah, on a footprint chart, you see a lot of information. You know, volume, traded on the bid, traded on the offer, imbalances, point of controls. Um, but really what you're looking for is, is certain things in the order flow. Not, like I said, not everything on this chart leading up to the stacked imbalance. You know, this to me, this is just the normal order flow, you know, the, the trade that's going on. But when something happens in the market, that's what you want to be aware of. And take a look at it and make your decision based off of it. You know, order flow is going to show you when a trader or traders are accumulating a position or distributing a position. Basically, the trades that will move the market over the near term, and that's what you're looking for. You want information that's telling you which way the market is going over the near term. This perfect example is stacked imbalance, right? We're sort of just drifting around here. You spike down, then boom, you get to this low swing low. Aggressive buying comes in. Stacked imbalance. This one's four level deep. You have one, two, three, four levels. And you can see how this market sort of went sideways, came back in, got aggressive buying, come back right in this bar and even in this bar, and we kept going higher. You know, you're talking a move from 61.15 up to 61.30 over the next, um, you know, not even 10 minutes. You have support. You know, the market is telling you, hey, you have a support area down in here based on the imbalances. Or you have aggressive selling stepping in. It's going to give resistance to the market. Market's just sort of going sideways here. You don't know which way it's going to go up. You got some aggressive buying in here. You got some aggressive selling. You know, these bars is kind of mixed. You have um, buying imbalances. You have selling imbalances. And then boom, sort of break out. And where, when you're breaking out, you got a aggressive selling in the form of a stacked imbalance. Market shoots, you know, spikes down, comes back up. Where's it come back up to? It comes back up into this area where you had the aggressive selling, the area where you had the stacked imbalance. So you get no, you, you know you have selling in here. And is selling still there? Of course it is, because the market hasn't traded up through it. So, you know, it, it's it's giving you a great opportunity to get short. And you know, then the market sells off another 10 cents over the next couple of minutes. You know, that's that's what I call you know the slam dunk trades. You know, sometimes the market just exposes itself, you know, opens itself up to you to say, hey, here's a great trading opportunity, take it. Um, you know, again, you know, big orders or big traders, they leave big tracks in the market, you know, hence the term volume footprint. You know, think of an elephant leaving footprints on, on, on the sand. And, you know, these tracks can, in turn, generate support and resistance for you to trade around. And when you know where these support and resistance levels appear, you have great trading opportunities. You know, you can see when resistance, you can see the resistance when it occurs. This is just euro currency. All these charts are within the last day or so. Um, here we, we shot up, got to this high overnight. This is at uh, 7, just before 7.30 the other night. And boom, you got this high, you know, you got buying imbalances on the way up. You got a stack selling imbalance in here. You start coming off, you rally back up. Where do you rally back up to this area where you had the aggressive selling? Okay, you come back up into that area, then boom, you have a nice sell off. You know, these are what I call the, the slam dunk trades, you know, the ones that are so obvious. And, you know, when I talk about opportunity, you know, opportunities at its highest, you know, you got aggressive selling, risk is low. It's because, you know, your stop is just right up here, right behind the imbalance or even right above the high of that bar. So you're not risking, you know, 10 ticks, 20 ticks. You have very tight stop. If you're getting in, especially on a pullback, you know, you're just risking a few ticks. And, you know, for what's your potential? Say you're risking five, say you're risking the eight range chart. Say you're risking 10 ticks maximum. You know, 10 ticks to get, um, you know, close to, you know, from one, I want to say, oh, 98 all the way down to 78. 
you know, that's these traits and half ticks. So, um, you know, that's 40 ticks, 40, 20 full ticks. You're risking um, five half, uh, five full ticks to get 20. You know, you're risking 10 ticks for 40 ticks, 20 ticks. Again, seeing support where it occurs. Come down in here into the swing low, start rallying up, boom, stacked in balance. Aggressive buyers coming in off of a low. You, know, you always got to be taking trades in, you know, in context of the market. If you're looking to buy, you should always be looking to buy below value. If you're looking to sell, sell above value. And what that means is, you know, buy near lows or sell near highs. Again, I'm not trying to pick highs or lows, no. But if the market is telling me something, saying, hey, buyers are coming in to scoop this up. And when you have big buyers buying at lows, it's often, um, ooh, it's often people that are controlling the physical commodity, the physical um, contract. And because they know where value is. And when you have big buyers coming in off those lows, you know, it's a fairly safe trade. And you can see how here, you got stacked in balance, it comes back in, trades within that area, you get one tick through it, okay, it's not the end of the world. You know, often when you're training a pullback, you know, you like it to pull back to a certain level, but sometimes it pokes through by a tick or two, and then it shoots up, right? That's, that's, you know, it doesn't get any more clearer than that. You know, markets make their own structure with their own supply and demand characteristics. And, you know, you have to understand that, and you have to understand how they form their characteristics. You know, big orders and aggressive traders give you support and resistance levels to trade around. There you go, stacked in balance, sort of just hang around there, then you get the sell off. Okay, you come into a low area, start trading up, boom, get a nice stacked in balance here on the way back up. So you had aggressive selling on the way down, aggressive buying on the way up, and then boom, you got another move here at the end. Even this last bar has also got an imbalance in it. So, you know, the third part I want to talk about is how to trade market imbalances with limited risks. And as a trader, right, you just you want to limit your risk. Okay, you can take as many trades as you want, but if you don't limit your risks, eventually you're going to get hurt. But if you limit your risks, you know, you could, there's a saying, you know, save your bullets. And, um, you know, it's, you can take the trades, take your losses quickly. And you have to be able to identify when the market is out of balance so you can trade in that direction. And again, you know, order flow keeps you on the right side of the market. You know, it's a perfect example of a minute based chart. This is a euro currency one minute chart from I think uh, Tuesday. And you know, the problem, uh, I trade range based charts predominantly, but I also trade minute based charts. But the problem I have with minute based charts is you get this on quiet times, nothing. Market just basically flatline. You know, even in some bars you're trading one lot or two lots or five lots and you're just trading one or two price levels. And you know, it, it's hard to make heads or tails on what's going on when the you know, market is going sideways and very little is trading. So you can see here, it's just going sideways, okay? So you're not doing anything. There's, there's no reason to take any trade. Now, a little bit later, right, when you get out here, this is one o'clock, this last bar on this chart. This is a continuation, boom, one o'clock. The bar right after one o'clock, what do you got? The market is telling you, you know, you're starting to see some activity coming. And what do you see? You see a stacked imbalance. You know, you got aggressive selling going on in here. You know, it trades back up here, trades back up towards this point of control. Doesn't violate it, which is also a, a bearish sign. Okay, so, you know, maybe you're not convinced yet that this market is, is going to sell off. It starts coming off. Then, boom, in here, you get an inside bar and you get another stacked imbalance. I mean, by now this market is screaming at you that, hey, you know, there's a sell-off underway. You, know, you might want to jump in and participate. And then we, we just drop further, another 10 full ticks there over the next couple minutes. But the signs were here earlier, earlier at this first imbalance at 101 p.m., boom. Okay, that, that's alerting you. Say, hey, you know what, pay attention to this market. And if you're not convinced yet this is market selling off by, you know, 106 p.m. you got more more confirmation that hey you know what this sell-off is, is happening and you better get in or otherwise you're going to miss the move and again you know during market rallies buying imbalances tend to dominate the chart right so that, that's why I talk about you know being on the right side of the market you're selling off you're sort of going sideways and you start turning around how can you be convinced that hey you know what maybe we're putting in a swing low is by looking at the order flow and if you're starting to see imbalances, 
you might not want to get short anymore. You might not think that, hey, yeah, we hit this low, we're bouncing up, and we're sell off again. No, if you're starting, you hit the swing low, you start bouncing up, and you see an aggressive buying come in, you start seeing buying imbalances come in, you're not going to want to get short. At least you shouldn't get short because what you're have, seeing is aggressive buyers aggressively lifting the offers to move the market off the lows. And during market sell-offs, selling imbalances will tend to dominate the chart. And again, you know, we start selling off, boom, you got stacked in balance, stacked in balance. In this case, you, know, you got three imbalances, three imbalances, you know, and you're just sort of going lower. Yeah, you got a couple buying and buying, yeah, buying imbalance here, 97, 30, 25, but you know what? You know, still heading lower. I mean, those are just sporadic ones. Predominantly, what you're seeing are selling imbalances. Now, you know, so how do you limit your risk? Well, your stops go behind the imbalance area or even behind the high of the bar where the imbalances occurred. You know, what you're doing is you're hiding behind the imbalances. You know, whether it's a stacked imbalance like you see in this chart here, you know, if you're getting short in this next bar, this bar here, your, your uh, stop is just above these imbalances. Just like here, you don't have imbalance, um, stacked imbalances, but you're seeing the buying imbalances. So say, you know, you're buying, you know, off this low. Well, you could hide behind these levels where you're seeing buying imbalance, buying imbalance, buying imbalance, buying imbalance, even though they're not stacked in the same bar. They're sort of coming around the same area in here, right? So if you're getting long, you, know, you have this area to hide behind. If you start coming back down in there, look for the aggressive buying. If it's not there, chances are if we start selling off and you start seeing selling imbalances and we get through these areas where you had the previous aggressive buying, it, it's not going to hold generally. So if you're able to see where supportive buying is coming in or resistant selling is coming in based on the order flow, you have an edge over other traders. You know, everyone always talks about you have to have an edge, you have to have an edge, but then they don't tell, give you an edge, right? They don't. You know, they, they, I guess they just leave it up to you to find you an edge. But I'm telling you, order flow, especially imbalances, will give you an edge over other traders. Why? It's because a lot of people think order flow is rubbish, you know, is, is garbage, you know, because, I don't know, maybe they don't understand it or it doesn't fit into their trading plan. Okay, you know, fine. You know, you could read Market Wizards, the book, Market Wizards, and, you know, you'll find 20 interviews with 20 different traders. Each person has a different way of trading, okay? And... You know, even today, there's six speakers talking, and each of us have our different ways of trading. You know, each of us is successful. And the fourth part that I'll talk about today, I'm going to give you my top two order flow imbalance trade setups. Now, these are setups that you can take if you're trading with order flow already. If you have a volume footprint chart, you can use these setups, you know, basically today. Start looking at the market, start going over your charts. Now, these setups okay like i said you know i created this order flows trader software because i wanted the computer to do some of the analysis for me to help highlight to me that hey mike you have some you know you have something interesting is happening in the order flow take a look at it and the order flows trader software highlights these areas to you and the first one i want to talk about is the first setup is multiple imbalances in a bar that are not stacked right i just spent a while talking about stacked imbalances now, there are times where you have imbalances, multiple imbalances in the bar, but they're not necessarily stacked on top of each other, right? You could have two stacked, you know, one stacked on top of another, then just a normal volume level at a price, and then the next price level is an imbalance. And to me, that's just as important as a stacked imbalance, multiple imbalances in the bar. And again, you know, the order flows trader, it, for the NT8 version, it does this. What it does is it puts a box around the bar to highlight when it occurs. And what does it look like? It looks like this. Okay, this this uh, purple box, or pink box, I guess. You have a multiple imbalance. You got an imbalance of zero against 13, five against 43. Then you have 20 against 23. That's not an imbalance. The 23 is not an imbalance. And zero against 42. So you got 13, 43, 42. Those are imbalances. You have multiple imbalances in the bar. And like I said, it's to me, it's just as important as um, a stacked imbalance, even though they're not neatly stacked one on top of each other. You know, you have this 20 against 23 in there, which just sort of, you know, doesn't give you that, that neat setup. But you trade it the same way. You know, it's going to be your support level happening. Again, you know, we're selling off, 
boom, you got some aggressive buying coming in. You had a little bit of selling right here, 20, 20 lots against 23. Okay, but then you got another buying imbalance. And you can see how it's, what does this market do over the next several bars? It's holding those buying, that aggressive buying area is holding. And eventually we make that move up over the next um, 10 minutes or so. Now for a sell, it's the same thing. And here you got the box again. The box is, it's a fixed color. I mean, you could change whatever color, but buys and sells is going to be the same color. It's, it's more to highlight to you what is going on in the market. So you got imbalance four against 27. Then seven against 19, that's not an imbalance. It's seven against 19 is you know, it's about two and a half to one. It's not uh, four to one. Then you have two against 24, two against 28. So you got 27, 24, and 28. Those are your imbalances. So you got multiple imbalances. And you can see markets just sort of hangs around those areas. You got some selling coming in, and then the market sells off right from that area. Again, this is something that will appear on the NT8 version, not on the NT7 version. Um, you know, now the NT8 is, is fairly stable. Um, I like it. I've been using it uh, since the beginning, well, since the end of last year. And, um, you know, people ask me, oh, hey, I haven't made any videos recently. It's because yeah, I was just spending a lot of time with NT8, exploring it out. And you know, I hope to start making videos again on a fairly regular basis. So, you know, that's the trade setup number one, is multiple imbalances in a bar that is not stacked, that are not stacked. Now, this trade setup number two, which is one of the original um, indicators or tools that I had put into Ninja Trader 7 version of Order Flows Trader. It's also available for Ninja Trader 8. And what it is, it's the imbalance on bar extreme. <laughs> so what, I'm, what it is, it's a buying imbalance on the top upper side of a red candle, a selling imbalance on the bottom bid side of a green candle. And what it looks like is this. It's this green here. I got the blue arrow, arrow pointing at it. You can see the imbalance, 6 against 28 on the green candle. On the sell, it's the opposite. It's a buying imbalance on the top offer side of a red candle. You can see it here. There's the red arrow to highlight it to me. 0 against 11. And what this is, is you know, it's, it's a combination of things. One, obviously it's an imbalance. So you got aggressive, like in this case, you got aggressive selling 28 lots down there. And why is that important? It's because, you know, the market is selling off. Going lower, going lower, going lower. And you have aggressive selling. Okay, that's what you expect to see. But at that area, the last seller has sold. And if the last seller has sold, who else is going to sell? There's nobody else left to sell. You know, people say, well, that's trap traders. I'm not a big believer in trap traders, even though, you know, because you know, you're only talking 28 contracts, you know, the 28 people, you know, 28 lots are, are trapped. Yeah, but you see on the way back up, 38 lots, 55, there's plenty of volume to get out on. So they're, it's not necessarily trapped in that sense. But the last, what's more important is the last seller has sold. If there's nobody left to sell. The last aggressive seller has sold. If there's nobody left to sell. Who's going to sell the market to go lower? It's gone. There's no, there's no sellers left. Just as here you have the aggressive buying. If the last buyer has bought, who's going to buy? Nobody. The market's just going to naturally drift lower. So... You know, these charts are NT8 charts. So, again, it, it's available on both NT7 and NT8 version. And it's just one of the things, you know, one of the ways that order flow can help you. And, again, you always hear people say you need an edge over other traders to be successful. But they don't, you know, what is your edge? Speed or market information? You're not going to compete on speed. You can't compete with, you know, these high-frequency traders that have servers sitting next to the exchange server. So you need better information. You need to take the information that's available to you and use it in your trading. So let me ask you, wouldn't it be great if you can find the same trades for yourself? You know, like what I was just showing you. Now again, you know, I don't want you thinking that you know stacked imbalances or multiple imbalances or um, you know imbalances on the extreme are you know are it. You know, you're gonna buy the software and you're just gonna look for those and make a lot of money. No, you guys obviously you gotta learn how to apply it, take trades in context of the market, and you know, but once you understand it, you know, you're gonna find you're taking better trades. With less risk, right? You can be able to have tighter stops. You can be able to know areas when you're in a trade that the trade's not working out, right? Say you're short, and all of a sudden you see aggressive buying coming in, you see stack buying imbalances as the market starts rallying back up, right? And you know, you're, you're seeing some of your profits vanish. You know, it's the market telling you, hey, get out of get out of the position. So with order flow, you can see that. You're gonna see market generated support and resistance levels. You're gonna see where aggressive buying and selling is coming in 
Now, everything you need to know about trading, I can sum up in four words. You buy, support, sell, resistance. So I should change it to um, buy below value, sell above value. Same thing. And order flow is used by traders in all futures markets, commodities, in currency, stock indices, financials. Again, I've, I've used it pretty much in one form or another my entire trading career. You know, that spans over 20 years. Now it's coming on 25, actually. But um, you, I realize you're not going to be like Spock on Star Trek. You need tools that can help you find good trades. And you know, in the past 40 minutes, you know, hopefully you can understand that order flow can help you with that. And I will give you a special offer. And because I want you to get started on order flow and quickly, right? I don't want you to just spend a lot of time, you know, over the next year learning order flow. No, I want you to get up to speed quickly within the next few weeks. That's what it's about, right? Is taking action. Because you know, I find that people that really take action are the ones that are more successful in trading. And if you act fast, I'll give you a very, very special deal that I very rarely make available. And what it is, is the order flows trader volume footprint chart. It's the charts that you saw generated um, used in this presentation. And it's the order flow volume footprint chart with the four built in tools. I only talked about one, I only talked about the imbalance part. There's four other tools that I talk about price rejection, um, price, uh, what do I call it, price um, support or price resistance. And you know, these tools are just there to help you analyze order flow. A lot of all the other volume footprint charts don't have that. They just take the volume and plot it on the chart for you. But use the computer. Let it take some of the heavy lifting for you. And this is available for Ninja Trader 7 or 8. It's available for CRA charts. And we'll also give you the education because I want you to learn how to trade with order flow. Okay? Because, you know, what's the point in spending a lot of money for this if, if you're not going to, you know, learn how to trade? And, you know, the software itself for $8.99, the trading course is $2.97. But, you know, because of investor inspiration, always invite me back here. I want to give a special offer. I want to give you access to my order flows inner circle, which is, um, you know, my advanced training. You know, there's over 50 hours of advanced knowledge on there that you're not going to get any place else in the world on order flow training unless you were to sit down next to me. And what you do is you go to orderflows.com slash all in. And this is the link right here. What you're going to get is the order flows trader software, the order flows trading course, the order flows inner circle. You get all my other indicators. You know, I, I haven't even talked about any of those today, but there's things like Delta Scalper, Price Rejector, um, POC Trader. You know, just additional tools to help you with your order flow. And normally, I sell this for two thousand. You know, if you were to buy it separately, it's over close to two thousand two hundred dollars. But you know, again, don't take my word. You know, other people have been writing. You know, this is on Facebook. You know, your order flows trader software is remarkably helpful. I can clearly see now what's happening in the market. You know, that's what I want you to get to. I want you to get to a point where you can understand what's happening in the market, how to manage your risk, you know, and hopefully find at least one slam dunk trade a day, you know. And, you know, ask yourself, what's it worth to you to be successful as a trader? Thousand dollars, five thousand, fifty thousand. Now I, I do mentoring, private trading, you know, people are trading pay me um, two hundred and fifty dollars an hour for it. And it's not cheap, but you can get started today for just twelve fifty. You get everything. You get the order flows trader, you get access to the inner circle, you get the order flows trading course. So you you know within a couple of weeks you can really learn order flow trading. And you just gotta go to the link below, orderflows.com slash all in html. It takes you to this page, scroll down, click on the button, I'm all in, it takes you to PayPal, that's where it's processed. And you know, I don't get your credit card information, I don't want it. So the real question is, you know, what are you going to do? Is it worth taking some time out to check it out yourself? You know, if it does just one half of what I claim, then, you know, it should pay for itself many times over. So, you know, if you don't get in, and you know, where are you going to be next year at this time? Losing money, wasting more time trying to understand the markets, or worse, give up trading. So if you stuck around to the end, you know, I, I said you get my free book. Go to uh, orderflows.com slash book.html. I'll take you to a page. Center your name and email address. And then um, after that, you'll uh, be prompted to uh, download the book. So, again, you can get started now. It's just uh, 1250. Go to orderflows.com slash all in.